In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at Leibniz notation. So there's an alternative notation that can be used for expressing derivatives. The ones we've had is um, for a function, let's say y equals f at x. Uh, what we've done is you can either express this as y prime for the derivative, or we've used f prime at x to express the derivative. Referring to the same function here, an alternative definition, or notation I should say, for the derivative can be expressed as dy over dx. And this would be read as the derivative of y with respect to x. So in this case here, the dy dx, this is your Leibniz notation. And what it's saying here is this is the derivative of y with respect to x. And we'll come back to this idea of what I mean by with respect to uh, in further lessons. But for now, uh, based on what we've been doing so far, given a function y equals f at x, you can express the derivative as y prime. Here you can express it as f prime at x, and then a generalized form for the derivative, you can do dy dx. Now suppose you want to express the derivative, like we have a notation here, um, f prime at 2 would be the value of the derivative at 2. An equivalent definition using our new notation here would be dy dx evaluated when x is 2. So you can see here uh, we have another sort of form here. This is dy dx evaluated when x is 2, and likewise f prime at 2. Both mean the exact same thing. All right, so now we have two different ways of expressing our derivative, and we'll see this uh, throughout the course uh, used interchangeably. Sometimes it'll be f prime at 2, sometimes it'll be dy dx evaluated at 2, or just maybe just the derivative in general, dy dx. I want to take a look at an alternative form for the derivative. So we have an alternative form for the derivative. The formula that we've been looking at here, and I'll link that in the top right-hand corner, whoever needs it, but we've been looking at the limit as h goes to 0, of f at x plus h minus f at x over h. And we've been kind of focusing our attention on assessing derivatives in this form. Now, we don't have to use this form here. There's another form that is available, and it's nice to have two different ways because sometimes the problem is easier uh, when you express your derivative in the following form. So same idea, though. You have a point here we're looking to calculate the slope of the tangent line right at this value. Right? I want to find what the slope is right here. I want to find that instantaneous rate of change right at this point. Well, the same process still applies. We want to first calculate the slope of this secant line and then slowly progress closer and closer. So what we did last time is the same as this time. I want to find the rise of this expression. Well, this expression here, you notice the rise of this expression will be f at x minus f at a. And the length of this leg of the triangle would be x minus a. Right? Notice here that uh, this point here is the point x f at x, so that means the horizontal distance away from my y-axis is x away, and the horizontal distance away from this point to my y-axis a is a away, so x minus a would be the distance of this line segment. And likewise, f at x minus f at a would be the distance of this line segment. So therefore, the slope at that exact point, uh, a f at a, would be the limit as x approaches a of f at x, minus f at a over x minus a. So now we have an alternative formula for the slope um, of your tangent equation, right? So we had this formula for slope. This was our slope at the point, and this is also our slope at the point. Let's take a look at doing this in an example. So for the following example here, we have a function y equals uh, x squared. We want to find f prime at 2. Or using our new notation, we want to find dy dx evaluated when x is 2. Let's go ahead and do that using our new formula. So the slope at that value is going to be the limit as x approaches a of f at x minus f at a over x minus a. That's our general formula here. Now we're not taking the limit at a, we're taking it at 2 here. So I can get rid of these a's here. I can change these to 2's. And now what is that going to be? Well, that's going to be the limit as x goes to 2 of f at x, which is x squared, minus 2 squared over x minus 2. And now you'll notice here we can go ahead and do difference of squares on the top, to which I get x minus 2 times x plus 2 over x minus 2. Now I'm taking the limit as I approach 2, in which case these cancel. And this is the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 2, and I can sub in that 2 and I get a limit of 4. Okay, So you can see here we have an alternative formula that in some situations is easier. The questions become easier to evaluate the limits. 
Um, so it's just good to have two different formulas, and now we have two different ones. Just to compare that here with the original formula, the old slope would have been the limit as h goes to 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x over h. And since now we're taking that limit um, at 2 at a specific value, that would be 2 plus h minus f at 2 over h, in which case here this is the limit as h goes to 0, 2 plus h squared minus 2 squared h. And continuing to evaluate this here, we'd see that I end up getting difference of squares just like before. But now we get cancellation on the twos, and um, you'll see here that this becomes the limit as h goes to 0 of h times 4 plus h over h. And now these will cancel. And then I can go ahead and take the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 plus h which, of course, we get the same answer as before. We get a slope of 4. So these are two ways of doing the same problem. Uh, you can see here that we were able to solve it in less steps using this formula. Um, but in, again, in general, you're going to see these formulas used interchangeably. And later on, there will be situations where we're going to want to use this expression for our limit. Okay, that concludes the lesson here. Just a quick introduction here to uh, alternative forms of derivatives, and then also our Leibniz notation uh, regarding their dy dx. Thank you.